In past videos, I've made cakes of jeans and a hoodie both folded up on a table. And this week, I wanna challenge myself in the cake clothing department and make a cake that looks like a t-shirt hanging on a hanger. Sometimes I start a cake and I think, there's no way you're gonna be able to pull this off. But I go for it anyway. This is one of those cakes. My name is Natalie Sidesurf of Sidesurf Cake Studio and I make cakes that do not look like cakes. And today I'm gonna to show you how I made a t-shirt cake. I've got a large gray tray, a sheet of parchment paper, and a sheet cake. I'm cutting a chunk of cake off of one side, and don't forget this piece because I'm saving it for later. For what, you ask? You'll see. I wanna fill this cake with a layer of buttercream, so I'm splitting this cake into two layers. I use most of my arms to pick up the top layer of cake, and then I'll set it aside while I ice the bottom layer of cake with gobs of my signature green buttercream. This t-shirt's going to be a crop top t-shirt, or fashion's sake. And because a regular t-shirt would require a lot more cake. I'm not gonna worry about the sleeves at first. I'm gonna add those later. This cake is gonna be a doozy. I'm sculpting it to look like a t-shirt hanging on a wall, when really it's just a cake laying on a table. So as I carve, I need to remember that the folds in the shirt need to look like they're hanging. They're not just laying flat. I have a real hanger that I'm using to understand where the shoulders of the cake need to be. And I use it to trim the corners of the cake. I absolutely love a squishy cake. Sneaking bites while I carve is my weakness. And here's a cake board that makes a great stencil for the shirt's neck hole. <laughs> and more yummy squishy cake. Remember that piece I trimmed away at the beginning? Well, it's back and I'm placing it on the bottom of the cake. That way the bottom of the shirt flares out. Now I slather a layer of buttercream all over the whole thing. It kind of looks like a book. I'm having a hard time not seeing a book here. Am I crazy? I have been incredibly busy this month, so I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't have a lot of time to plan this cake. So I'm really going with my artistic gut. I'm going with my instincts, and my instincts say more buttercream. <laughs> now I'm rolling out some white modeling chocolate, which I'll use to cover the cake. This layer of modeling chocolate is pretty soft, and that's gonna allow me to go in and refine the shape of the cake and add all those tiny details that make it look so realistic. I trim away the edges, which I always try to point out because I think that trimming away that chocolate with a blade is really satisfying to watch. Now I'm adding extra modeling chocolate to the bottom edge of the shirt, and that's gonna give the illusion that it's hollow inside. It's an optical illusion. I wanna add a collar to this shirt that looks like a separate piece of fabric. So I'm rolling out a coil of modeling chocolate and I'm adding texture. To add ripples to the modeling chocolate, I'm using a texture mat. I love the way that the ripples look when the light reflects off of them. I got this one as a gift at a cake convention and I use it pretty often. This is a very valuable freebie. And again, I trim the excess off with a blade. Satisfying or meh? You make the call. Now I'll just secure the edges with sculpting tools and add a little pizzazz around the collar. Speaking of pizzazz, I love this little stitching tool. I've used it on cakes that look like boots and towels. It's another tool that is very, very valuable. Okay, this shirt has been sleeveless long enough. It's time to add them. I'm moving the cake onto my work table because the sleeves just won't fit on that gray tray. I saved all the cake scraps that I carved away earlier and I use them to make cake ball dough. Cake ball dough is just crumbled up cake mixed with buttercream, and it's what cake balls are made of. It's the perfect way to use those cake scraps, and it can be shaped easily, and it's delicious. Even though it's this odd shade of green, I promise it's tasty. Now I'll cover it in modeling chocolate, and I'll shape it. If you're enjoying this video so far, and you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, because I post a new cake every week. I have a lot of interesting ideas coming up, and I have no idea how they're gonna turn out. So also make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss them. Here I have the hanger again, and I'm tracing around it to make myself a parchment stencil. Making a stencil like this one is one of the best shortcuts in cake making. Not only is it cheap, but you're always sure to get the correct proportions. You'll notice that my stencil looks more like a mustache than shoulders of a hanger. That's because I'm only making the part of the hanger that's gonna be visible. The ends of the hanger are gonna be hidden under the cake shirt, so there's no need to make them. For the hanger hook, I've got an extruder with a small round end, and I'm extruding black fondant into a coil. I'm using fondant rather than modeling chocolate for this because it's gonna dry more firm. I also tried to roll this out by hand, but I quickly realized that the extruder is the way to go. It's hard to roll out a thin coil, then I line the fondant up with my hanger hook stencil and I let it dry overnight. And now it's time to paint. Here I have some pink, purple, and gel food color. 
And now the parchment looks like the face of a bunny rabbit with a nosebleed. And that's because I'm going wild today, friends. I'm gonna paint this t-shirt in the most difficult way that I possibly can. I'm gonna try to make it look tie-dye because I'm insane. Tie-dyeing clothes is not very difficult. In fact, I'd call it a leisurely fun activity for people of all ages. But painting a tie-dye pattern onto a solid surface is very difficult. The tie-dye stains have a pattern. It's a very messy pattern, but still a pattern. I knew it was gonna be difficult, but I did it anyway. I'm, just, I am, uh, I'm trying my best. And I made it extra hard on myself because I just had to do the swirly tie-dye pattern instead of just doing a more random tie-dye pattern. I have to admit, I'm having fun with these colors. So while I'm getting frustrated trying to make this chocolate covered cake look like a soft tie-dye t-shirt, I'm really enjoying the pretty. I'm cutting the hanger that I made earlier in half because if I don't, I can't fit it in the t-shirt neck. It's not like I can just stretch the neck to get the hanger in there because this ain't a real t-shirt. I forgot for a second. And finally, I'm going to paint the hanger brown using a flat brush to make it look like stained wood. The brush strokes really help to give it that wood grain effect. And there you have it, a hanging t-shirt cake. I like the brown hanger. I've got this pretty colored, swirling, whimsical t-shirt, and then boom, we've got some rustic brown wood. But I'm a bold woman, so I'm glad I went for it. I at least deserve a cake for trying. All right, let's cut this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another cake.